relax, the keyboard is off and the press box is closed, but the mic is just getting warmed up. Welcome to the Hockey Writer's Inc., the show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. Join your host, Lance Green, the guardian of the blue paint turned writer, and co-host Steel Flyers, as we bring you all the latest on the Philadelphia Flyers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next edition of the Hockey Writer's Inc. with your host, Lance Green. All right, trade deadline we're going to be talking about here just finished up, and uh, Flyers did make some action happen, so we're going to get into it. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, I am Ron Steele Flyers, and I'm your co-host and the host with the most, the editor-in-chief, Lance Green, sitting in as the host. I'm here to tell you, this is a Philadelphia Flyers-centric podcast, and we would like to thank you all for tuning in, checking us out, putting in your earbuds, listening to us, and thanks for uh, all the uh, great shorts uh, that's coming out, and thank you guys for watching that. Um, Appreciate that. So let's get right into it here. Uh, It looks like the Flyers followed our advice and didn't pull a Chuck Fletcher uh, and was able to make some moves Not just today at the trade deadline day, but also before the trade deadline day. So they kind of took our advice a little bit, maybe. Well, Mm -hmm. all right, we'll claim that. Probably not, but yeah. (laughs) We'll claim that. Come on, with little victories, right? You know. Okay, so here we go, folks. Episode number 158 of Hockey Writers, Inc. The Philadelphia Flyers trade deadline, and we're jumping right in. And Lance, I have to ask you, okay? All they wanted was a first-round pick. That's all they wanted, right? Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, right? So, a couple of days before the trade deadline, the new Briera comes out and lays it on out there for a first-round. It's conditional, but it is a first-round pick. And unfortunately, we had to say adios to a Mr. Sean Walker, uh, but he was traded to Colorado for uh, Eric Johansson, or I'm sorry, Ryan Johansson, and also for uh, a conditional first round 2025 pick or potentially could be a 2026 first round pick. Either way, it's a first round pick. Mm -hmm. Lance, what do you think, man? Well, I think they definitely got value for him, right? Sean Walker and Nick Sealer were uh, being discussed as, uh, you know, possibly coming back, uh, working on deals and what it might cost to re-sign them. Uh, Sean Walker, you know, wanted to get paid. Obviously, he's playing some of the best hockey of his career this Hello? year with the Flyers, but he's an impending free agent. So uh, we can't keep everybody. They got a lot of youth in the system already, so... They yeah. ended up trading him, uh, you know, to Colorado for a conditional 2025 top 10 protected pick. I think they're going to get that pick because uh, Colorado is definitely not uh, going to be one of the 10 worst teams in the next couple no. of years. They, uh, no. they are going to be a playoff <laughs> contender, I think. So we should be able to get that 2025 first round pick from them. Uh, in that trade, like Steele also mentioned, we got back, uh, had to take on some salary in Ryan Johansson. Uh, he was a bit of a cancer out there in Colorado, from what I hear. Uh, just needed a change of scenery, not really fitting in there anymore. Um, the team put him on waivers as soon as trading for him. And reports are that he's going to be uh, reporting to lehigh valley to play with a phantom so um you know they wanted to go out there and get that first round pick they didn't get a third one this year but they ended up getting a a second one for next season so uh you know we'll have two this season and two next off season as well so uh right big trade there for a guy who's potentially you know, going to be an uh, unrestricted free agent at the end of the season if, if Colorado doesn't re-sign him. And, yeah. uh, you know, kudos to bucks. Danny Breer because a lot of trades today, uh, you know, he made that trade a, a day or two before the deadline. And uh, a lot of guys today were going for second round picks and everything like that. Even some or, big, or big, lower. big guys or lower. or lower. So, um, 
<laughs> kudos to him for going out there and getting a job done early and getting that first round pick that the team wanted. <clears throat> I have to say, I'm I'm really liking the move here. It's sad to see Walker go, but he's going to get a shot at Colorado. And boy, was Colorado out shopping for groceries today. Holy moly. Sean Walker was one of them, right? And I think he's going to be a major asset for that team moving forward. In fact, man, that that team is looking even more stacked because they're without Landeskog. You know what I mean? So they're trying to build up and trying to build and trying to make another run. You know what I mean? And, And you can't blame Colorado for doing that. And they have the picks and the capital to do it. And the cap space, so hey, why not? I mean, you know, it's very rare that you see uh, a a contender like Colorado doing what they're doing, you know, and and building um, at the trade deadline. But really, really like what Danny Briere did here with this pick. Um, He even said in his press conference about Johansson that he is not part of the plans moving forward. And so they asked him to stand pat for a couple of days. They're going to try and find a deal for him or a team or something. Otherwise, he'll report, uh, like Lance said, to the to the Phantoms. Um, so so there's that. The other name that you had mentioned that was part of this whole conglomeration of like what everybody was talking about, what the media was talking about, you know, all the all the pundits were talking about was the other name on the list, Nick Sealer. Now the other night against St. Louis Blues, um, took a shot to the shin that he blocked, and uh, he's going to be out for uh, day-to-day, I guess they're calling it, or whatever. He's going to be out for a little bit of time. But they didn't trade him. They re-signed him. (laughs) So uh, talk to me about that, man. I I mean, Danny was busy, has been busy all week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Nick Sealer is a Flyers guy through and through. Um, You know, he is a hard-nosed player. He can play up and down the lineup. He can play either side, the right or the left. Um, He shoots left, but he can play the right side. He's he's 30 years old. Um, I don't think the I don't think the team wanted to go five years with Walker um, like he was asking for, Um, and you know. I think Walker was asking for a lot more. Um, and, you know, Nick is just happy to be in Philly. He's a Philly guy. Uh, yeah. the, the the people love him. He's a great plus minus guy. He's a plus 15 this year for the team. Um, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He'll go out there and scrap. He'll go out yep. there and hit. Yep. He'll go out there and obviously block shots. And, Top shot uh, blocker too. You know that that is that kind of injury is going to come when when you got the amount of blocks that this guy has. Um, you know every year. So you know he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, right? So the Flyers, you know, that's why they ended up signing him instead of Walker. Um, for four years, he's going to be here for two point seven million AAV or you know cap. Um, it's not horrible deal for a guy not for four years. That's good term. That's good money. It's, yeah. it's a team friendly deal for a guy who's now making the most money ever yeah. in, in his, his career, career sure. with this deal. Yep. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a good deal for the team. I mean, when injuries occur, he, he can, he has shown he can step up and he can play top four, you know, pair or top Wherever we need, you know, minutes and stuff like that, wherever we need them. So uh, great, great deal. It was rumored at first to be for a lot more that he was asking for. But, uh, you know, I think Danny talked some sense into him and, uh, you know, he he probably wanted to stay here. So he signed for, you know, a reasonable deal. So kudos uh, to Danny to get that deal done, Um, you know. It's a guy that's going to be here to to kind of help us until some of our other younger defensemen can kind of develop. And, uh, you know, I, I'm here for it. He's a good character guy. He's a good team guy. 
I'm with you. I'm with you on that for sure. He's good in the locker room. I yep. hear nothing but good things about him in the locker room as well. Um, he, he is exactly what you said. He's a team guy. I love the fact that he sticks up for his line mates and his other teammates. Um, he's not afraid to get his nose dirty. He plays in the dirty areas. He plays in front of the net. Um, he's got a wicked little wrist shot as well. So, I mean, the guy's got all the tools to be the perfect flyer, and, and I think that that's exactly what's going on here with this. Some good news. I mean, we're just going to keep on with the good news here, sure. right? Might as well, because we're on a roll, right? The other night, playing against the best team in the East, and Philadelphia suits up. TK is back. And I'm here to tell you, he was noticeable on the ice. Um, and, and, and it was great having him back. And what a great win for this team to come in and win this game against the, the, the Panthers. Yeah, hard-fought game. I mean, obviously, when you're taking on one of the best teams in the league, it's going to be have to be a hard-fought game. And, uh, you know, Sergei Bobrowski looked great in that. God, I wish we would have kept him. I know. Uh, didn't ever <laughs> send that horrible deal the game for was, Oh, we should have kept Bob. <laughs> God, I wish we never signed Brzgalov and forced him out. But, uh, you know, yes, great to see TK back. Obviously, you know, 27 goals on the year so far, 54 points. Uh, he is a leader, and that's why he was given an A. And he got to wear that, you know, uh, for the first time this season, whatever. But, um Man, you know, great to see him back in action. And uh, the team came out and they played hard, especially since uh, so many defensemen, Nick Steeler, Ristolainen, and Drysdale were out. And so many young guys were thrown into the fire in Ronnie Attard, Adam Jenning, who I really like. And, uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. of course, was in the lineup. Uh, You know, he's kind of been up with the Flyers a lot this season. But, uh, you know, three young guys in the lineup and and uh i really like the fact that uh we got to see some of these young guys play and um you know jenny was here to stay i think he's very underrated and very physical yeah. big defenseman and uh really showed the team what what he may be able to do and maybe next season with the team i'm with you zuma is here to stay okay throughout that whole time Everything that Chuck Fletcher did was he played 11-7, but one of the other guys was in there was always Zumala. Yeah. Right? So, okay. It's hard to send so, him down. He's played, when he's playing, he's playing well. So, I really was impressed with what Ronnie Attard and, and, and Jenning did. They were defense pairs back in Lehigh last year. So it was great to see them back together again because they did really well because Ronnie Attard went to the uh, – uh, 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 AHL All Star Game last year, right? So, okay, and they did not disappoint. They impressed. Uh, I I was very much impressed with how they played. They were defensive responsible, um, and when they made a little mistake, they were able to get up on the horse and take care of business and and make up for that mistake and take care of that. You know what I mean? So, all right. Here we go. I thought it was great, man. So, yes, and and with that being said, I know you're kind of scratching your head on and one of the trades the Flyers made today and Eric Johnson um, from the Sabres, uh, 35-year-old cup-winning, Stanley Cup-winning defenseman there. Okay. Uh, we, the, we traded a 2024 fourth-round pick for him. Uh, but you know he won a cup with Colorado. He's an he's a veteran defenseman there. Uh, kind of a big cap hit at three point two five million dollars. Obviously, yeah. the Flyers don't have to pay all of that because most of the season's already paid played out there. But a right hand shot defenseman. Um, you know that big name of Drysdale is out on that right side. So maybe that's why. But uh, you know the guy is a former. Number one overall pick. I mean, back in 06. Yeah, and a granted, cup winner. Granted, he's a Stanley Cup winner. He's a former number one overall pick. Doesn't have a lot of points this season. He has three goals on the year. But um, that's not really his thing anyway. A, a big point guy, getter. But, um, man, it, it, it kind of is exciting as it was to see some of the younger guys and Atard and Jenning, like we said, 
this kind of throws a wrench in all that. Um, you know, I, I think the Flyers went out there, obviously, with so many defensemen still hurt. Now, Steelers do back soon, but, you know, Drysdale may be out for a while. Risto's been out for a while. You just yeah, really? traded, you know, Sean Walker in a veteran defenseman there. Um, so this guy's contract's up at the end of the season. All right. Um, yeah. maybe it's I just mean, a it reassurance well. thing. I like the guy. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. great. He's great NHL defenseman, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I see it more as a reassurance thing for the flyers. Uh, you know, you got a veteran, you just dealt a veteran, you have a lot of injuries on the back end. You bring in another veteran to kind of help you get through these next, what, 20 games or whatever's 19. left of the season. Oh, I'm sorry, and, 18 games. Right. No roundabout. And uh, maybe potentially help you in the playoffs. Obviously, he knows what to do in the playoffs. Um, so it's not nice. A bad pick. Move. It's not a bad move. It's a smart move, you know, for the team, I think, uh, with all that being said. But, man, that kind of takes the wind out of the sails for getting to see some of these young guys. I wanted to see yeah. some more young guys come up and just cycle through maybe one or two a game uh, until Drysdale and others can come back. But uh, a smart move, nonetheless, I think, by Danny Breer to bring back in another veteran, being that you dealt out one and kind of help this team get through the rest of this year. Uh, so, And we didn't give up that much for him. If you look fourth round. Yeah, if you look back at what the, what the Flyers have done in the fourth round, it really hasn't equated to much uh, the past few years. So, um, you know, by all means, I, I think it was a strong move at the end of the trade deadline just to gain some depth back uh, with all the injuries entailed. So, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on yeah. that. And then, of course, the last move um, that was made um, was uh, – Dennis Goriana, yeah, uh, from Nashville, uh, for Wade Allison. And yep. what do you think about this one, Lance? Man, I really like it. I got to tell you, I think it's sneaky good. All right, <laughs> Wade Allison was a great potential flyer, right? Wore his heart on his sleeve. Um, you know, f- fought Rempy in in the preseason before everybody knew who Rempy was uh, a couple of years ago. Um, you know, tough, tough player, but always hurt, man. Even back to his days of college, just cannot stay healthy. He was up with me most of the time in a suit in the press box. Um, you know, (laughs) that's, that's not being very contributive. That's that's not, uh, that's not helping the team out too much. Right. So what did the flyers do? They went out and got a guy who's kind of been down on his luck. He's a 26 year old Russian player he's six foot three 205 pounds okay he's a former 2015 12th overall pick a first round pick hello of of dallas um okay this guy is a former nhl 20 goal scorer back in 19 in the 1920 season for the stars in the regular season he pulled out 20 goals and in the playoffs that year he pulled out another nine goals and eight assists for 17 points (laughs) <laughs> OK, this guy has all the intangibles to be great. And young. Uh, he's kind of bounced around a little bit, hasn't found a home. All right. But for the Preds this year, he played 14 games. He only scored one goal, two points, was a plus four. All right. Uh, in the AHL, though, he played 27 games this year, 12 goals, 18 assists for 30 points. So 30 points in 27 games in the AHL. If nothing else, he's going to help out the Phantoms, bring a little uh, depth down to them. A good call-up guy for the Flyers. He's uh, got an expiring contract at the end of this season, and he's only signed for $850,000. So a potential guy who could be asked to prove himself and and see if he could potentially play a game or two down the stretch um, if injuries occur for the Flyers. And, man, I mean, he's done it before in the NHL. He has all the intangibles. He's a big guy. He can throw his weight around. He fights a little bit. Uh, all things that the Flyers like here, man. Um, Especially in a D-man, and I think a that is D-man. a sneaky, sneaky pickup that every with all the trades coming down today, down the pike for every different team, it's one that – kind of got 
okay, this happened and moved on, right? But I kind of really like it, Steele, because the potential is there for something good to come from this guy. If they can kind of get his confidence back, um, I think it could be really sneaky good deal for the Flyers. Uh, Kudos to, to Danny and Keith Jones for coming up with this one to get rid of a guy who who just kind of was done with the with the Phantoms with the Flyers he's kind of had all his chances he's yeah. not really progressing anymore you kind of send Time him on go. his way and hopefully he can regain himself somewhere new yeah. um and start fresh but uh I kind of like this coming back still I got to say yeah I'm with you on that um all right well so now we talked about all the things that Danny did do. Yeah. What about, what do you think about something that he didn't do? Well, obviously, I got a, I got two things. Obviously, he did move Scott Lawton. And I think from what he said in his press conferences and everything like that, he didn't really want to, right? Right. He likes Scott Lawton. Um, you know, he's good in locker room guy. He's a good team player. He's been there a long time. One of the longest tenured flyers on the team. He brings a lot in the four check. He back checks. He does all the things that John Tortorella likes and every coach would like, right? He's a team guy. He's a coach's guy. Um, If a team, they listened to a lot of offers for him at first. I think it kind of died down when the teams heard the asking price for him because they weren't just going to give him up for, for even what he was worth. They teams were going to have to overpay for him because that's how much the flyers like him. Um, Another thing. I wanted to go out and get Trevor Zegras. He was out there. His name was out there. Um, he's a guy who's kind of dynamic, uh, special forward, kind of uh, a guy who's changing the face of, you know, this new age of hockey, right, the, with all the Michigan goals and stuff like that. He's a dynamic forward who scored a lot of goals and a lot of points past couple of years he's kind of signed to a big deal but kind of fallen out of favor with uh the ducks he's best friends with jamie drysdale so that would kind of lead to you know hopefully being able to resign him but it didn't happen it didn't come to fruition he's also hurt now yeah he's he's kind of banged up too but uh he's on his way back to being uh, uh you know mended up and and being back yeah. in the lineup so he's hurt now, um but well, I, yeah I, it didn't happen i'll tell you what though lance you know i i like the thinking on that you know what i mean to bring somebody in there like that a dynamic type of player but <clears throat> i don't think bringing a guy in with that kind of a salary no matter how dynamic and how much of a good friend he is to Drysdale or anything else like that. Yeah. Would I love to see him? Yeah. Would he put butts in the seats? Could he be a banner? We can hang off the side of the building. Sure thing. You know what I'm saying? But I think some of that's coming for Philadelphia. Okay. At least I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping it's coming. <laughs> Cause it's going to be long seasons. If it ain't, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm with you. I get it. Um, but I kind of see why that the deal didn't get done because right. the asking price would have probably have been way more than what the Flyers would have been willing to shell out or could have shelled out based off of injuries and everything else that's going on right now. You know what I mean? So I, I was a little shocked at no goaltending. Mm-hmm. No, no goaltending moves made at all for Philadelphia. and And that... I'm kind of scratching my head on that a little bit. I mean, there's even some goalies out there that could be claimed off of waivers and still nothing. Yeah. Um, it, it was a question that I, I had to, um, I think they were definitely thinking all about it. Uh, you know, Urson's played well as a rookie, you know, 18 wins on the season. Mm. He's got great numbers, as my article I put out recently, you know, kind of alluded to. Um, I think Felix coming up and having that one good game where, you know, he um, was able to only let in two goals and and win the game versus uh, Ottawa recently um, kind of calmed down a lot of that. 
hype of mm. needing to, but in my mind, uh, man, one game is not enough for me. Um, if the Flyers are actually going to make a push, I, I, I've recently named a, a couple of different guys um, who could have been options to come back and wouldn't have cost the team that much. Uh, right. backup, you know, as a veteran backup guys. And, uh, you know, as you said, you know, Ranta was out there. Uh, it's not the best is, is, but, uh, I mean, a couple of seasons ago, guys. He, yeah, I mean, a couple of seasons ago, he, he won a, win, a, a Jennings trophy. So, yeah. I mean, I think it was more playing time has been a lot less for him in Carolina. Oh, yeah. Um, a waiver wire guy we could have had, uh, there's some other trades, you know, that could have been had for backups, but um, it was interesting that they sat and, and didn't acquire anybody. Um, I, I think the asking price, there was a lot of big name guys uh, that yeah. didn't even go on the goaltending market anyway. Um, you know, Jake Very Allen few, went. If any, yeah, Jake, I think Jake yeah. Allen went, but, you know, that was a lot of money to take on. Um, and I wouldn't have wanted to give up a third round pick. Um or even bring in somebody that could potentially be a be a starting goalie, or you know have our starting goalie in Arison think that hey they're you know gonna bring in this guy to kind of compete with me. Uh, I wanna I wanna stand behind Sam and and kind of push him as the starting goalie and let him see where he's gonna go. So I'm glad they didn't go out and get a a big name guy in a sense and spend way too much you know, on that. Um, uh, but, uh, to do nothing is, is, is kind of, we're going to have to see how that all scratcher. plays out. Yeah. yeah we're going to have to see how all that plays out. Yeah. Cause I think you're going to need that. You need that presence. Yeah. You I need that need veteran down the stretch for sure. And look, I don't need this goalie to play the last, you know, 17 of 18 games. If yeah. they play four, you know, that that's all I really need. And then for you to be a capable backup during the playoffs. You know, because in the playoffs, they don't do back-to-back games, mostly. You know what I mean? Very rarely. They did during the COVID years. But, but other than that, they haven't really done back-to-back games for playoffs. So it's not like you can't have one goalie go the whole playoffs. And you know, how many other teams have done it? So, like I said, I, I was just shocked that they... Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they didn't do it because of the fact that, hey, look, we only need him to play four games, maybe, of the final 18. Felix could at least do that. He's already played one and did well. So I maybe think this you're says right. a lot to the defense as well. Um, yeah. That with, with Arison, with Sandstrom, they played well in front of these guys and stepped up um, every night for these guys and, and know that they're both rookie guys and, and are going to need some extra help. Right. So kudos to the defense, kudos to the system in that aspect uh, I agree. Uh, towards making all these guys get back on offense and everything and, and help these young goaltenders uh, because man, it could be a whole totally different situation. If we were playing some other previous coaches system still and, and having <laughs> these rookie goalies back there, I think, you know, so. look, I just got to say this just because, well, cause I got to say this, right. So I had on the, the, the trade deadline tracker was on and I had on uh, TSN and I had on NHL network and I got all this stuff running, right. Just in background and everything, just so I can hear and everything. And then I, I, I pan over and I see Chuck Fletcher sitting there at the desk, right. For TSN. And they were asking him about the trade that he made in, in uh, full pop for, for, for Pavel at the wild. Right. And then, you know, well, what was it like to be, you know, for the Flyers? And I'm just sitting there going, wait a minute. You brought in Chuck <laughs> Fletcher to be your GM analyst? Mm. Well, he definitely doesn't have anything else to do right now. So, well, all right. But I was just really shocked to see the TSN has Chuck Fletcher on the desk, you know, with, uh, okay, when, whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, all these things that they did make, what was the two things that they didn't make that you thought they should have made? 
I mean, that's that's you know, kind of kind of what I went over with the with the you know, the Zgrass and the Scott Lott in there. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. With I'm the sorry. with the with the the two things that I think they shouldn't have really uh, they they went where they went through. But um, you know, I, oh, overall, I think the Flyers did well. Of course. Yeah. Let's let's give them a grade. Let's let's give them a grade. Okay. What do you think their grade was for? today's trade deadline i mean let's face it it wasn't just about today it mm-hmm. started you know a couple of days ago back with the uh with the walker deal well i think overall <clears throat> i would give them a, a b i don't know if i've given them a, a b plus they went out and got their first round pick okay it wasn't yep. for this year but they went out and got a first round pick um you know there's some things they could have done Obviously, you, you always want them to do more and more, but obviously that's harder than, you know, said than done, right? So I, I'll give them a solid B. They went out and got that first round pick like they wanted. Uh, they could have moved Scott Lawton. They could have went out and got a goalie. Um, you know, we're going to have to eat some salary and, and Johansson for a bit. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, you but know. That's only till the end of the year, but. Yeah. You know what I mean, and, and I'm and, and it's only it's like only fifty percent of that salary too that they have to to pay because the other team is going to retain the other fifty percent, and it's and it's you know there's eighteen games left, so seriously, how much of that money is really going to be left on the table for you to have mm-hmm. to pay till the end of the year? You know what I mean? And so, uh, gosh, Lance, I, I have to tell you, man, um, when I saw the the news break about the the Sean Walker deal. And then, like, it wasn't even that long after, and the news broke about the Nick Sealer signing. Mm -hmm. So that right there, I think, is what's going to give me the B. I'm with you, though. I would have given them a plus if they would have done something to try to get a little bit more dynamic, you know, either at goal or up front. But... Look, all things considered, man, I'm with you, dude. A B, a solid B for this draft or for this trade deadline. Yeah, I'm I don't think you. they I don't think they gave up too much for anybody that they acquired. Um I I think, you know they didn't they, give up the farm. They didn't give up anybody of any significance. Um they were able to get what they wanted. Um a, a solid B because a lot of these teams and we can talk about some winners and losers of other teams as well, because I mean, if you're talking teams that won out, you got to be talking about Colorado in Ooh. a sense. Yes. They got Sean Walker from us. Um, they got Casey Millistent too from Buffalo, uh, which could be a solid uh, help down the middle. And my guy, Yakov Trenin, yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing player. I wrote yeah, about yeah. him before. Uh, I would have liked to seen the Flyers jump in and try to get him um, if they were going to get somebody um, who would, who they hopefully could eventually resign. Um, you know, some other winners, Florida, you know, Tarasenko coming in. They didn't even need him, but they got a great player. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, Kyle Oposo came to I was the, gonna say Oposo as well. went to the Panthers as well. Oh, yep. that's a good so one. So that was a good solid, solid veteran there. Um, you know, Boston picked up Pat Maroon. That was okay. Uh veteran guy, a lot of cups, another opportunity to, for some cups there. The Jets, uh, to Foley, Sean Monahan. Everybody forgets about Sean Monahan being picked up by them because it happened so early on. Mm-hmm. Um Carolina Listen. getting Gunsel, oh, oh of yeah, of course, uh, and Krunensov, uh <coughs> excuse me, from the Caps, Igeni, um, Vegas. Oh my gosh, Vegas. Noah Hannafin, who the Flyers threw in a little bit of money, ate a little salary, and got a fifth round pick for that <laughs> as well. Hey, Creative. because they gave up a pick for the Walker trade, yeah. or uh, not the Walker trade, uh, the uh, yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, for the I Walker think they trade, gave up right? a seventh for that, so they regained a fifth. So, okay. Um, Vegas also got Anthony Mantha from the Caps and pulled out a last-minute deal for Thomas Hurdle. Hurdle, yeah, uh, yeah. From, 
from San Jose, you know, an all-star player there. Uh, Vegas is trying to win a cup again. Uh, whew, man. Say, it, I, I think the Rangers made some good moves. Um, uh, Tampa Bay. Denver, yeah, yeah. Made Tampa some Bay. good moves with Dumba. And Duclair. Right? And Duclair, right? yeah. And uh, I think the other guy that they got was, uh, oh, I'm going to probably butcher his name, but uh, Rose Lenoff. Uh, uh, yeah. The, Jack, anyway. Jack Resavulovic. That's it. Yeah. Uh, right. Columbus. You said it better than me. Yeah. I wrote about him previously, too. Uh, Jack's a great young player. Uh, sneaky good guy that, uh, you know, just really wasn't continuing to develop in Columbus. So uh, interesting, interesting uh, trade there for sure. Um, but uh, the, I think he went to the Rangers, though. I think yeah, he the went to the teams, Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the top teams, I think, got better. I think the Bruins got better with their moves. I think Tampa Bay got better with their moves. I think New York got better with their moves. I don't know about New Jersey yet. They kind of were on the selling block, it seemed like, with well, the Foley going and it was kind of questionable. It was, it was odd, wasn't it? Uh they they traded their top scorer in uh Tenolfi and then to Foley. Yep, to Foley, and then come come back and gain a goaltender. Um and, and Jake Allen and it and it's just questionable in my mind as to Well they also fired their coach the other day. What are you doing? Too. Yeah, you you what are you doing? You you're kind of selling and buying and firing your coach. You don't know what the heck you're doing. And <laughs> I, I think uh and that goes to you know the they really haven't been on it on it. They've drafted a lot of young guys. They've got a lot of young pieces in the system. Um <clears throat> but no cl clear direction uh, yet. No. Um, I mean, last year they made the playoffs convincingly. They were the most improved team last yeah. year with the most number of points from one year to the next, and it's completely the exact opposite of what it was last year this year for them. It, it's definitely interesting to see what the heck's going to go on in, in New Jersey. I mean, the, in the standings, they're still in the hunt. Um, so they could have went either way and be buyers yeah. or sellers and stuff like that. But from what you just said, i you know, I agree, uh, the Carolinas, the Tampa Bay's, the Boston's, the New York Rangers, as if Jets, they needed Vancouver, anybody, uh, Vegas, Colorado but, all got better. Yeah. But I'm thinking just in the East alone, you know, oh, yeah. Florida got better. So Man, it's going to be tough, uh, you know, for the Flyers to hang on, but a t especially a team like New Jersey to to be able to fight that much harder now and come back. I, I don't see it. So if they wanted to sell, then so be it. Yeah. Um, but man, it's it's going to be a, a tough road for the Flyers. I mean, they've been holding on to that third position in the Metro for some time now, but. Uh, Everybody, Knock on wood. <laughs> everybody just got better, but uh, you know, you got to go back to this team as fighters, man. They're they they just beat the Florida Panthers, you know. So um, twice they keep now, twice now they beat yeah, Florida since yeah. the All Star break. They they keep surprising people, and um, you know, do I think they're a true contender this year for the Cup? No, I don't. But uh, you got to love that this coach Tonight. has them in games mentally as well as physically. They're ready to go for these games no matter who's in the lineup. Yeah. You, you saw that with Konechny going down and Drysdale going down and all these big-name guys going down and Carter Hart being, you know, thrown gone. out of the mix, gone. Um, so, Harrison stepped up. All, yeah, all, um, all Tyson guys, Forster. Has All of these stepped guys up. stepping up, yep. And, you know, I wrote on that uh, recently as well. You know, we talked Into about that uh, a, a show or two ago on how Forrester's been stepping up. So this is just what you want to see uh, from a rebuilding team, right? Uh, guys are going to fight hard. They're putting butts back in the stands in Philly. People want to come see this team play. They know what they have in them, uh, and and they they can see where they're going. 
Uh, it's exactly. it's it's going on the up and up now and trending uh, in the right direction, trending in the right direction for sure. So. It looks good. You know, the team made some good moves. They didn't go crazy and overpay. Overall, I think the team and, and Danny yeah, Breer did well. Um, he didn't stretch too far and make a deal that he shouldn't have had um, just to make a deal. So I like it. I, I like what the team did at, at this deadline. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep trending in the right direction this offseason uh, with the draft and maybe trade some other people, um, you know, uh, before next season and all that. And when it's a little bit easier to make a trade yeah, uh, and you got some more time to get the team under the books and everything like that. So. Plus the fact that the cap is going to go up. I also think, too, that the Flyers are 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10 games um, with the the last uh, game being a winner here against uh, uh, Florida. I think they're trending now in the right direction, even though it's 4-4-2. Four, four, and two, I, it's, it's amazing to see them um, with 64 games in and 74 points. They are one point shy of their total points from last season. Okay. So um, even if the flyers go 50% down the stretch, that's still almost another 20 points compared to what they had last year. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think 90 some ish points will get you in the playoffs in the East. I think it okay? definitely should. If not, if if anything, it'll be a wild card, but it will get you in the playoffs, I think, with that many points. So whether now, it's the third place or not, I don't know. But I, I'm pretty much saying that even if Flyers go 500 the, down the stretch, that still should be enough points to get them into the playoffs. Yeah. Now, the Flyers have a, a rough road ahead of them in the next couple of games. That's why next, I'm saying if, in they the next go, 10 games, if they go 500. <laughs> man, let's let, I mean, let, let's run it down. The next 10 games, they got teams like the Lightning, the Maple Leafs, the Bruins, uh, the Maple Leafs again, the Hurricanes, the Bruins, the Panthers, the Rangers. Like, boom, 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 boom. Back to back to back to back to back. That's a tough stretch right here that they're looking to go to. So that may be, you know, a, another reason why they went out there and got a guy like, you know, uh, Eric yeah, uh, on the back end, because yeah. man, that's, that's going to be a big ask of bringing up some of these rookie defensemen and throwing them to the wolves and that sense. Like yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lance, I'll tell you what, my friend, I think we got a really good one here. Um, we both gave the flyers um, a B for their trade deadline this year, which was 360 degrees different from what they did last year. <laughs> oh. yeah. uh, you know, so um, I, I hate to ask you this, man, because you've been so busy, but anything uh, in the works, any articles in the works? Uh, other uh, than the great prospect uh, watch article that you posted just the other day too, man, that was uh, Romani. That's a good player, man. Even though he's a late bloomer, that's a great player. Um, that you guys should be checking that out. Go to steelflyers.com and check out Lance's latest article on Prospect Watch. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm trying to get a hold of some teams and get some Prospect Watch shows back out there to contact <laughs> yeah, some players. Um, I got one or two in the works uh, that I'm contacting some teams on about that. Um, as the on the Flyers end of things, um, I, I may do a synopsis of, of what we just talked about and kind of a rundown, a uh, brief rundown on yeah. you know, some of the players and, and why and, and everything like that. We may have acquired them, um, but who knows uh, what will be coming out in the next couple of days uh, as far as articles go. So, For sure. I'll be looking for a short coming out from this show here too soon. So for sure, for sure, I'll be looking for that. And big thanks. To frame our main man who's making our shorts for us. Oh my gosh, this guy is talented and amazing. And man, he puts out some good stuff for us. So be sure to check some of that stuff out too. So thank you very much for that. Lance, where can we find you? Well, you can always find me at steelflyers.com as always. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or X at lance.green39. 
You can find me on any flyers, Facebook groups, and all my articles are posted on there and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. So I just appreciate, uh, you know, all the reads and uh, all the views, of yeah, course, of, of the show and the listens. So uh, keep it coming, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, sure. We try to do the best we can here to provide as much information and flyers coverage and prospect coverage and uh, et cetera. Exactly. So I am working on a special guest as well, um, one that we've had on the show previously. Um, he's our official photographer for the Philadelphia Flyers. and uh, I'm trying to see if we can get Lenny on the show. And uh, he reached back to me and said sometime at the end of the month. So I said, hey, man, you let me know what days work for you and we can make it happen. So hopefully we'll get Lenny here at the end of March to be on the Hockey Writers, Inc. We've had him on before. This man has amazing stories about some of the greatest pictures that, that we've ever seen about the Flyers. So got to go check him out, too. You can find me on X at Steel Flyers 52. And you can also check out all the great stuff at SteelFlyers.com. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys all on the next episode of the Hockey Writers, Inc.